Get the trunk of the tree, I'm going to actually use instant coffee and a small flat brush. I'm going to mix a little bit of instant coffee in my mixing tray with a little bit of water. And that's my darker shade. And I'm now going to make a lighter shade by dipping some water into the mixing tray into a separate compartment. Never pour it, just dip it with a brush. And then I'm taking my darker shade and mixing it with the water. So I have a darker and a lighter shade. I'm going to take my darker shade and I'm going to paint everywhere there's a shadow with a darker shade. Just right on top of the shadow. Taking my darker shade and I've painted only where there are shadows. Now I'm going to take my lighter shade and I'm going to paint next to the shadows. Not on top of the shadows, next to them. I'm not coloring in my entire tree, just painting next to the shadows with a lighter shade of the coffee. Okay, I'm going to paint out a little bit because it's a cylinder. Okay. But I'm going to leave the left hand of my side of my tree completely white. So it's going to go from white to a light coffee color, to a medium coffee color, to a dark coffee color where I painted on top of the shadow. Now the coffee is transparent so you can still see the shadows through the coffee. And that's how you're going to be painting the tree trunks. Painted the middle tree with a darker shade and now I'm painting the middle tree with a lighter shade. I am not coloring in the entire tree. Some of it needs to be left white because that's where the light's hitting it directly. But all three trees have been painted, the trunks of the trees have been painted, I can worry now about the leaves. For the leaves, because this is an autumn landscape, we're going to be using red, orange, and yellow paint. I've taped off the other colors because you don't need them right now. And you're going to be using a fan brush. Now, where the light is hitting, you're going to be using yellow, which is the latest of the three colors. So the left-hand side of each tree, I'm tapping on yellow. It's a fan brush. You're not brushing with it. You are tapping with it. Okay? I'm just tapping the yellow right on here. And I'm going to do that to each tree. The left-hand side of each tree is going to have some yellow tapped on it, just tapped. The next color I'm going to use is the orange. I'm going to get some orange. Now, what I'm going to do with the orange is this. I'm going to put it on top of the yellow, but under it. Tapping it on but it's going to go underneath the yellow. So the upper part of the tree is going to have yellow and the lower part is going to have orange and then red. So now I'm using red. What I'm doing is I'm trying to give the feeling of fall light where the Sun actually comes through the leaves, and the leaves almost have a glow to them. And you can see the light and shadow gets emphasized by the difference in color. What you don't want to do is you don't want to over blend it. You're trying to get the texture of the leaves. You do not want to mix the colors completely because each autumn tree actually has more than one color in it. In fact, each autumn leaf has more than one color in it. So you're going to actually tap one color on top of another to give the feeling of the fall light coming through the trees. And just keep stepping back, looking at it, and trying to get it the way you want it to look. Okay. 
Okay, and I'm starting to like it. So now I need to start worrying about how I'm going to do the grass. Grass, I'm going to use the analogous colors of yellow, green, and blue, and I'm going to be mixing them. The grass starts at the horizon line and goes down. Anything higher than the horizon line is going to be sky. So back near the horizon line, it's going to have kind of a bluish look to it. The reason why everything looks kind of blue far away near the horizon line is because the particles of dust in the air reflect the sky. So near the horizon line, everything has kind of a bluish color. What I'm going to now do is I'm going to take my fan brush and dip it in the green and the blue together, and I'm just tapping on the texture of grass, but now it's slightly bluer green. And from now on, I'm not going to be using any more green, uh, blue. I'm just going to be adding green, but I'm not going to be washing my brush because I want that blue and that green to mix with each other. So I'm getting a blue-green texture. As I get closer, it's going to move away from the blue and farther towards the green. So I'm still doing my grass texture, but it's getting greener. As I get closer to the viewer, closer towards the bottom of the paper, I'm going to be tapping yellow into my green. I'm getting a yellow green as I go towards the foreground. we have to worry about is the sky. Now for this project the sky is going to be blue because it's a sunny day. That's why you get this intense light. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fan brush and I'm going to actually paint water on my sky area and then I'm going to get a little blue and I'm going to go left to right and it's going to run but only where I painted the water. It's not going to run into the grass. Okay. So you paint with water first. That's called the wet on wet method. And then you're going to paint with the blue and it will only run where you painted the water and nowhere else. You might cause some other colors to run uh, from the leaves, but generally that blue will not run down into the grass if you painted the grass dry enough. If you use too much water in the grass, it might run into the grass, but otherwise it won't. So, water, and then blue paint on top of the water. That's called wet on wet painting, and it gives you a nice, smooth sky. And that is how we paint our autumn landscape.